On the podcast today, we are going to speak about chapter 60 of the Tao Te Ching, which makes up the 60th episode of the 81 Meditations on the Tao Te Ching. And as usual, Guyang will read Jia Fu Feng and Jane English's translation, and I will read Derek Lin's translation. Ruling the country is like cooking a small fish. Approach the universe with Tao, and evil will have no power. And not that evil is not powerful, but its power will not be used to harm others. Not only will it do no harm to others, but the wise will also be protected. We will not hurt one another, and the virtue in each one of us refreshes everyone. Ruling a large country is like cooking a small fish. Using the Tao to manage the world, its demons have no power. Not only do its demons have no power, its gods do not harm people. Not only do its gods not harm people, the sages also do not harm people. They both do no harm to one another, so virtue merges and returns. So this chapter is about the famous cooking a small fish metaphor, which is related to how a king should rule a country and also how we should conduct our own lives in following the Tao. Yeah, so cooking a small fish is a very delicate process, right? It's not like a big fish, obviously. You can't gut it and you can't poke it and you have to be very patient and you need to just uh, give a good care, right, while it's cook getting cooked. So again, just like that, uh, ruling a country is uh, like a, yeah, cooking a small fish. You cannot poke and you cannot uh, flip over and... and then you will spoil the fish, right? Mm. So you just need to give a gentle care, no interference, but you need to see from a little bit of a distance, uh, just a yeah, the good caring heart. Yeah, and wait and see sort of attitude is very important. Yeah, I think that the cooking a small fish metaphor kind of encapsulates all of the Taoist principles of simplicity, moderation, and also the essential teaching of wei non-interference. And so in here, Lao Tzu, obviously, to speak to what you were saying is, you know, you can't flip over the small fish too many times when you're cooking and this and that. It's such a delicate process. Life is delicate. Our lives are delicate. And dealing with other people is a delicate process. Dealing with a nation, dealing with anything is a delicate process. But we go about our lives haphazardly and are very clumsy and, and we don't really treat ourselves and life with the respect that it deserves. So we cause a lot of problems due to our own beliefs and our own conditioning because that's why we interfere with people, right? Where in the Tao Te Ching, Lao Tzu is always saying that we need to kind of deprogram ourselves from that conditioning and those beliefs. And once we do that, then we can be as the ruler is in this chapter where we can govern a, a country based on those principles of non-interference because once you govern a society based on that where you leave people alone to follow their own natures obviously there is law and order but there isn't an overreach with rules and regulations and so then people just get along with their lives treat each other with love and respect and it just goes about its business once you create too many rules and regulations, as the Tao Te Ching states in other chapters, that's what creates thieves, that's what creates robbers, that's what creates crime. When you create a society that in some sense is too difficult for a lot of people to navigate. <laughs> and so if it's a top-down system where the ruler of a nation is following the Taoist principles, then often that'll be reflected into the society in general. And we see this all around the world, right? However the rulers are, usually the society will reflect a lot of the time whatever the government is saying and this and that, sometimes in a very sheep-like manner, but uh, in a very sometimes in a, in a harmonious manner as well, as this chapter is alluding to. That's right. In this chapter, in, Derek mentions as in demon, right? Mm -hmm. And then this one, Jane English is the uh, one saying the evil, right? Mm. So uh, I think it has a two different kind of meanings. One is that, as you said, like a demon and evil being like crimes and chaos. And in a way, that kind of uh, too much interfering characters from leaders as well that could be a little bit of e evil and demon type of thing right exactly. because that will just spoil the country yep. and eventually it might just become destructive right mm. but in the literary meaning also in this chapter is also 
like a, a literally evil or demon kind of thing. Because in ancient times, the people believed in uh, getting punished by demons and evil from the hell kind of thing mm. if they did the wrong things or they did um, things against the way of nature, way of the Tao, mm. so that they thought that they would get the punished if they didn't follow the Tao or doing the right thing. But again, approaching universe with the Tao here, meaning as in a Taoist sage type of ruler come to the position so that it, uh, he or she rules the country with the right manner as in following the Tao, then there won't be any crimes or the chaos and this and that so that mm. country will be fine just like in this chapter saying out how the virtue will nourish everyone, will refresh, refresh one another. Yeah. And when we look at the small fish, right, uh, if we can look at it a different way as well where not a different way but a similar way to as what you were saying is that when we cook a small fish there's not much you can do to it you almost have to leave it natural as it is and so you can't like we mentioned you can't poke it and prod it and, and do many things with it but you have to leave it kind of as it is and the ruler if he leaves a society as it is the Tao moves naturally through the world because there is no interference and now a lot of people have a nervous reaction to that type of mentality because we do live in a world that is consumed by interference. So we can't really see how that's even possible. Mm. But as the ancient Taoists would always say, even in the time of Confucius, is that we've never really even tried. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it all remains theoretical until that point in time. Not, not, I'm not saying that they weren't Tao. There obviously were Taoist societies before the Warring States period of China. And that's why a lot of these texts and that came about because there were real Taoist societies that were eventually rubbed out by large-scale societies, you know, due to Confucianism and the Warring States period of China and also how other societies around the world naturally evolved. Now, there's nothing wrong per se with that evolution, but the, the, the problems arise when we have a large-scale society and then we feel the need that we need more interference as opposed to less. Because, you know, in a smaller scale society, obviously, from our perspective at the moment, you would need less interference because there's not that many people to worry about, right? But the problem in the modern days, we haven't really given that type of mentality a chance. Mm. And look, you can start on your own level as well. You can start in your own community, your own neighborhood. And again, that relates to this chapter as well, because with small changes, sometimes big changes happen down the path. And so if we make those changes on it on our own communal level, then that might be possible to change in a global sense, not overnight, but, you know, eventually. Yeah, so bringing simplicity in our life and the larger scale, as in um, politics and whatnot, is seemingly unnecessary or impossible, right? But let's look at in our individual life, for example. I think uh, you mentioned that how fragile our life is. Uh, we need to really, really understand that aspect of our life. Um, in the Upanishad, it talks about the value aspect, value being a wind. Mm. And in other words, they also say it as a prana, being breathing, the breath, right? The value, wind, wind is like how wind come comes enters in our body and then goes out, right? So the breath here is what it's talking about. So without breathing, there's no more life. Mm -hmm. It's simple as that, right? It can cause, the cause could be many, many different reasons, right? Why you don't breathe is different cause. But this, as simple as that, if your breath gets taken away for a certain period of time, you no longer have life within your body. Right, it's, that's how fragile our life is. Sometimes we forget, right? Yep. Because our life becomes so complicated and too many things happen at the same time. So we don't think about that way, but life is very fragile and it can get taken away just like that without having a breath yep. taken away from you. You, you. you no longer live, you're not conscious anymore. That's how fragile it is. So under having understanding that the simplicity comes very easily, actually. What do you have to look after yourself to 
continues to breathe literally mm, you gotta yeah. stay healthy you gotta have um a healthy mindset and physically as well and everything comes from that right you can make it simple as simple as you want really the life that at once that little things but they are very important and essential things are taken care of and the rest will be fine yeah. right and usually we we know that because somehow again this is the way of the Tao somehow things just get taken care of itself without us giving too much attention and basically interfering with it right so again the same thing with the larger scale and global scale or a national scale to me maybe a lot of us have already forgotten about it but the pandemic that we went through for two three years was such learning time uh, for myself anyway that how the businesses were uh, going down and how people were going like a panicking and things like that see how fragile we became like but only like when you think about two three years in our life is actually not much right yeah. but what actually happened to everyone around the world did some damage i think right people watch too much news that's right but in a way we brought it to ourselves. Why? Because we made our life way too complicated than how it should be, right? Mm. So if we, again, same thing at the rules and regulations. If we make too many rules and regulations, we have to make more rules and regulations. Yeah, of course. That's yeah. how it is. If you just simplify things, things are simple. Like, let's say, uh, let's just follow common sense. It's simple, right? Simple. We know... We know in our heart and God that what's right and wrong thing to do, right? But if you make it too many rules and regular, you shouldn't be doing this, you got to do this and this and this, too many different things, then uh, naturally it brings more problems, more chaos, because people don't understand. We are not on the same page probably because it's too complicated, yeah. right? So those two, three years of pandemic period really taught us how fragile globally the the how life can be and how world can turn the other way around really mm -hmm. and i think we are uh, you know suddenly or not suddenly uh s still recovering from that time but people just don't pay attention yeah and it goes to show how gullible people can be too to listen to too much media and news and and this and that without supporting actually just small businesses and this and that like people turned on each other which is very sad because again to this chapter the the leaders and the the people who are running the narrative you know all of the the ones who stood to make a lot of money who were trying to talk down the people who were choosing their own decisions for their own health you know so it, it exposed that in a lot of way that a lot of people sometimes are easily led down the garden path by people who don't have their best interests at mind. And so that's what happened, and that's what this chapter is talking about. And that's why actually some of the deeper components in this chapter talk about, like when we talk about interference, like, you know, you said the pandemic, right? Talk about the most people have ever been interfered with. You know, <laughs> don't do this, don't do that. Stop telling me what to do, man, and just piss off. And so... The more subtle elements in this chapter is that the ruler has to even be aware that no matter how well-intentioned our interference may be, that that can also lead to worse problems in the future. And so you have, it's twofold. You have this on a collective level with activism and you have this on a individual level with self-sabotage. So first of all, on a collective level, you have this activism, that crazy activism too in the modern world, that everyone's an activist about everything and are just not allowing, or they don't want to allow people to live their own lives. They want everyone to think as they think. They want to interfere with everything to make the world in their own image. And they will use all sorts of terms, all sorts of reasons to undermine you, why you should do that, and also to justify why they're doing it and why they think they are right. This would make Lao Tzu and Zhuang Tzu just laugh hysterically, like they just fall off the couch and they're, they're just in complete <laughs> hysterics because, first of all, Taoism is amoral, and second of all, 
is that often when we overly interfere, no matter how well-intentioned our interference, it causes a lot, lot more problems in the future. And so the ruler has to be very cognizant about this. And we also have to be cognizant about this in our own societies and culture. Like when we see someone parodying or someone uh, promoting some sort of activist group or some sort of type of mentality in the society, you need to have a little air of skepticism and, and first ask, why are they so vexed by this problem? You know, why are they trying to tell each and everyone how to think and how to be? Because usually in older generations, if we saw someone who was out there trying to tell people to think differently and this and that, they were the first ones scorned. Mm. They were the first one where people questioned. It wasn't the other way around. We live in a world now where it's the other way around. One person says something and everyone is gaslit. Yes. It, it's ironic, right? I mean, yes. it's, it's stupid in a lot of sense. Yes. Yes, um, a lot of the times maybe let's say they're um, rulers or an individual, their intention is maybe innocent, mm. right? Like even activism. The intention at the beginning was innocent maybe. Mm. Those people who had a right intention behind what they were doing and what they were believing in. But often it can meet a lot of conflict and disagreement, right? But when that happens, if it subsides in time, then it will get resolved some in some way, right? But if it doesn't, that indicates actually, yes, intention might have been true and innocent, but in the end, maybe that wasn't the right move, mm. right? Two wrongs make the troubles, right? It always works like that. So um, in that case, maybe it can lead to the actually destructive the destruction. So a, as an individual sense as well, like a, you might have an innocent intention to begin with to, to do something, but maybe it didn't. It, there might be a few signs that it doesn't work. Maybe you shouldn't keep following with that. Otherwise, you might just uh, spoil whatever that you were doing. So in the end, yeah, it becomes a uh, uh, self-destructive. Yeah. Well, that naiveness we talked about throughout the pandemic also overlays into how people approach certain activist groups, yeah. right? So like you said, it starts off innocent and then they become a fanatic. And then what's not spoken about because legacy media is compromised is how many activists have killed innocent people. Inconvenient truth, right? An inconvenient truth. So these things aren't spoken about or are not, you know, mentioned. And so you're radicalizing people. Mm. And so what Taoism does is unradicalize people. Yes. You know, even if you believe in some sort of movement or activist group, it's good to kind of pull back a little bit, question your own motives, question why you want to go out there and tell people what to do and how to think. Who gives you the superiority to even do that? Question yourself. And don't make up any BS excuses. You know, these, especially the younger generation continue to make up these BS excuses why they should tell people what to do and how to be, which is actually just a sign of weakness and immaturity. And so we could go on and on and on about that. But when we get down to the individual level, like I said in this, in this chapter, we get down to the interference on the individual level, which is self-sabotage. And this is also a negative evolutionary habit. We have this negative negative evolutionary habit, right? Like the best way to describe this is like a, a happy married couple, for example. Say they've got family, kids, this and that. And one of the spouses is tempted. <laughs> you know. But they've got all of this good things happen in their life. But you know to spice up a little spice bit. Spice it up a little bit, you know. And so we have this negative evolutionary habit now in psychology and in the spiritual traditions this is spoken about a lot because it is a it is a really odd trait because it's like you make a beautiful cake and then you, you stick a cockroach right in the middle of it and and you pretend like it's delicious but it's not and so we've we've we're under, we we go through this habit of self-sabotage where we have life p beautifully perfect as it is, right? And then we continually want to pick at our, our scabs mm. 
you know, we do this with uh, history, right, where we look back in history and some people say, oh, look at all the injustice and uh, this and that. And so their idea of healing this is to pick at the scab, which open, doesn't heal anything. Yeah, open up the old wounds. Open up the old wounds. Yeah, that'll help. <laughs> all that does is make more division in the society rather than just getting along with life as it is. Because most people in general, normal blue-collar people, don't have time to think about these things that these rich, entitled university students have time to think about. Yeah, I think uh, people um, become a little bit stale in a sense, uh, not really satisfied. They are satisfied, but not fully content with their own life, right? That's uh, like you made an example of a happy family, right? And if uh, um, members within the family are extremely content with their own life and grateful of what they have, then those are... Temptation. It may knock the door, but you won't open the door, mm. right? You won't get. Uh, the door, yeah, you're not gonna act on, right? Because you then become wise enough to know what the consequences might be, yep. right? So we need to learn to uh, be actually wise in that sense, and also need to learn to be grateful of what we have and also to be just content with the as things are, yeah. right? Well, this is why people need spirituality in their lives. If you have spirituality in your life, then those sorts of animalistic urges or desires are easy to curtail. Now, look, it's not to say that people who are interested in spirituality are saints. Obviously, there's people who commit the same sort of things like adultery and, and things of this nature. But... You'll see, uh, you know, in a lot of cases, like people who are atheists who will take it as an opportunity, you know, like, because it is only this life, right? Like, why? But when you think like that, you think, well, they've even got more to lose in some sense because if it's only this life and you stuff up your relationship, that's it. Yeah. You're not going to get that back yeah. because there is no other life. It's too much damage. Too much damage, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so we've got to be really cognizant of this self-sabotaging mentality that we have on an individual level and stop interfering with our own lives allow our own lives to effortlessly move and as the society does as the the ruler is trying to do for the society you do that also when you govern your own life yes again this metaphor cooking a little fish is just a perfect example just the perfect way to put it that you just uh, don't interfere with it yep. don't spoil it but just be very, very observant with the gentle care. That's right. That's right. And follow the Taoist principles of simplicity, moderation, and most importantly, non-interference, Fu Wei. And when you do that, you get out of this mentality, like they allude to at the end of this chapter, you get out of this mentality of us versus them. Yeah. We create a symbiotic whole, which we already are, but we forget. And so Taoism is a very holistic-oriented philosophy where the focus is on holism. And so we can only understand that, as I've mentioned millions of times throughout the podcast, through the, the paradox of unity. Mm. Because oneness is a paradox. You can't just go around saying everything is one, everything is one, and someone punches you in the face, and then everything obviously is not one. But you, why it's a paradox is that you need to trust the world mm. to understand oneness. If you're going around trying to change the world and also in some sense trying to change yourself according to whatever someone told you you should be or how you should think, then you're never going to understand the true nature of the Tao. That's right. And so that's why the Tao is the paradox of oneness. And that's what this chapter is about. Leave each other alone, leave yourself alone, and then you'll start to harmonize with the world because you're in harmony with your own self. So guys, we hope you enjoyed and we'll see you guys next time.